Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show, Creative World. I'm your host, Shin Matsuba. We'll be introducing some amazing, talented people, chatting with them in a one on one interview, hearing their stories, picking their brains, looking through the kaleidoscope of Creative World. This is Creative World, the world of entertainment. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm proud to introduce today's guests. Yes, I said guests. One is a world class musician, and the other, an award winning filmmaker. These two extraordinary artists have come together to collaborate on the fantastic documentary film, Mr. Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Peter Michael Dodd and Jimmy Sakrai. First, we will talk to Peter. Hello, Peter. Thank you very much for joining us today, despite your busy schedule. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great, great. So I have a lot of questions for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. So first question is that how did you get your start as a director? Well, uh, I kind of feel like I really started as a little kid in a way. I, I uh, First, I had a tape recorder and I would make little radio shows. And then I had a camcorder. So I would make, you know, war movies in my backyard with my buddies. Uh, my career actually went a different way. I wound up working at film museums for a long time. I was a curator and a film programmer. And that was great to kind of build up uh, all my influences and to study the great directors. But at some point, it really felt like I was a, a food critic, but I wanted to be a chef. So I sort of quit that job and quit that world, uh, moved to L.A. and started working for hire as an editor. Yeah, but it's, it's something that I, I've really started, I feel like, when I was a child. That's pretty cool. It sounds like you've, you've got a lot of like background, different kind of like jobs and all that. But what specifically, what jobs would you think influenced you as a director the most in the past? For me, I think it was, I had an internship for Errol Morris, who's a documentarian. He's based in Boston and he made The Thin Blue Line and Fog of War. And back then, I mean, I grew up very working class. You know, everyone around me was, uh, there was, wasn't anyone in the arts. So to ha discover someone just down the street from me, three blocks away, who was making artistic films was totally inspiring. And beyond that, it was also like practically gave me the first building blocks to make movies because back then in the 90s, it was really hard to get editing equipment. You know, it's not like this little laptop you have now and everyone can can edit. Back then, it was like a $100,000 machine and and it was almost impossible just to touch it. So to have that in my neighborhood, it gave me the inspiration to do it. And it also gave me my first practical skills. That's where I really learned how to edit for the first time. So have you noticed any changes of your in your like directing style of directing you know, when you between like when you started your career and the present days? You know, when I started, I watched a lot of movies. I, I probably watched too many movies and I was so reverential about directors and directing and making films um, that I think I was really uh, overly theoretical um, and overly maybe academic in a way. And then once you start shooting things, you realize the reality of shooting something on the day and how important, as opposed to your film theory and whatever this pen might symbolize or whatever else, what really matters is the, the mood that you can create on set, whether it's a documentary or something scripted, the energy that you can create in a million different ways. So um, I think I just transitioned from a sort of, uh, I don't know, um, mythologized uh, version of making films to a more practical one of like, what does it take to do it? I'm curious, you know, the Mr. Jimmy, how did you initially come to make the film Mr. Jimmy with Jimmy Sakrai? So I had finished my previous film, King of Size, and I was really hungry to make something else. And one night I saw this guy on YouTube, Led Zeppelin, Rain Song, 1979 version. So it was a Kyo in a club in Tokyo, and it was so specific. It wasn't just the rain song here's a guy you know there's a million guys on youtube trying to play the rain song and they're probably not playing it correctly but you know uh he was playing not only the song but he's playing the august 4th 1979 version from the nebworth festival with the same 
guitar, the same strap, the same shirt, the same intonation, the same everything, the same hair, uh, the same everything as Jimmy Page from that one particular night. And I'm a Led Zeppelin maniac, so I recognize those details. And when I clipped, uh, clicked on a, a clip that said 1970 uh, concert, I noticed, wow, Sakurai has a, has a fake beard and uh, is using a different amplifier and he's, he's, he's moving in a different way. You know, he's, he's really become Jimmy Page from 1970. And I just recognized that he was like a method actor, a musical virtuoso, a musical historian all wrapped up. And I thought, gee, how many directors are there that know the difference between Jimmy Page 73 and Jimmy Page 79? I thought I could maybe be someone to really do a good job telling the story. So I sent an email to him in Japan and his wife wrote back that I must be a lucky guy because he was about to move to LA. So I, at that point, I thought it was just fate, really. How often did you did you guys communicate each other and then kind of end up like making film film? Well, we we had a he wanted to kind of make sure that he did he felt loyal to him in a way and didn't want me to usurp or take over, you know. So we had a meeting with the three of us, and that wound up being Sam, who's an incredibly nice guy, and we kind of all agreed that well, Sam could tell the story as a Japanese uh, guy from his point of view, and my point of view would be totally different. And so I was a little nervous at first if, if Akio would, would be okay with an American telling his story. And certainly there were times when he got a little bit uncomfortable when things weren't going so great with being filmed. But just like he does with his Led Zeppelin music, you know, he never quit and he, he let me film him the whole way. And I think in some ways he got energy because somebody was filming him. You know, somebody believed that he was that talented and that that special. You guys showed up at set and the film together and uh... What was it like working with Jimmy? It was amazing because um, when you work with someone and they're the genuine article, you know, when their passion is real, I feel like that's inspiring. You know, when, when someone loves something and is willing to work that hard to achieve their goal, that inspires you and reminds you of why you pursue your passion. So I found it so inspiring to see how long he could practice, how many times he could listen to the same song, studying every note, every finger position, everything you could ever imagine about a Led Zeppelin song. And it was also just so fun because he was playing this music that I love and he was playing the heck out of it. And he was playing it in a way that really evoked the magic of the original. So it was kind of mind blowing. I mean, in some ways, I mean, I feel bad that I have, I was just thinking about all the outtakes I have of amazing performances. Uh, and how much great footage we got of him playing, you know, a 26 minute version of Days to Confuse. I mean, you know, there's probably an edit of the movie that's five hours long that just has because I couldn't stop any of this beautiful Zeppelin music. But I don't quite think we could make a five hour movie. So I would like to have a lot, one last question, which I would like to mm. ask every guest. And uh, the title of this show is Creative World. So what does the word creative mean to you? What is your own interpretation for the word creative? For me, it's this. Be yourself. Be yourself. Be yourself. So be yourself, meaning? I, I just feel like as an artist, like the whole point is to do something different or do something that's in you that isn't in the next guy. So I, I really feel like he is to try to know yourself and put a little spin on it. So I feel like, uh, you know, I could name my influences all day from Kubrick to Kurosawa, you know, and beyond. And I like to steal from them and then make sure I put my own energy into it and my own vision. You know, I think that's that's super important to know yourself and to try to do something a little different. If people like it, great. If not, great. I'm sure there's some people that think there's too much Zeppelin in my movie or something like that. And I'm like, great, just watch somebody else's movie. But that's what I love. And that's the whole point. We don't open with 10 talking heads saying, hey, Led Zeppelin's a really great band. And wow, Jimmy Sakurai does a great job. To me, that is the absolute opposite of what I want to do. I just want to drop you into the movie, have Jim Jimmy Sakurai play the guitar for three minutes straight. And if you're not in love with what you just saw, yeah, change the channel or watch a different movie. But I just want to dunk you and immerse you in the wonderful world of Jimmy Page 
and Robert Plant and John Bonham and John Paul Jones, that amazing music and Jimmy Sakurai's relentless attempt to to capture that magic. That's the kind of movie that I like, and that's me being myself and expressing my uh, appreciation for Jimmy Sakurai and Jimmy Page in my way. A lot of people could make a music documentary that would look totally different, but I feel so good about this film because this is what I'm into. This is what I like, and uh, hopefully people out there will enjoy it too. That's pretty cool. So, you know, but uh, one last thing is that uh, I want you to, like, you know, right now we're currently living in such a difficult and unprecedented time, so people are trying hard all over the world, but would you give a, a warm message to our viewers, please? It might be an opportunity to do something that you're not going to do when life gets so busy. You know, stop, reflect, think about who do you miss and why. And if you really miss somebody and spending time with them, that means you love them. That means they're important to you. So cherish that or take some time to, to reflect on your job, on, on your passions on, in this case, the music that you love and what it means to you. Um, yes, it's incredibly challenging and scary to have to stop uh, your life as this, this time has sort of made us do, but try to take advantage of it and, and just to realize that once life starts up again, we're not gonna have this time to sort of stop and think and maybe appreciate those things even more. I know that the one thing I'm gonna, and I think this is very common, the thing that I'm gonna probably enjoy the most is yeah, I wanna see Jimmy Sakurai playing guitar, you know, on stage, you know, and I wanna see Jimmy Page playing on stage and I wanna see, you know, the greats um, playing on a stage uh, while I can and live music. I think that's really what Mr. Jimmy is all about. And honestly, what Led Zeppelin was all about, live, the live experience. You know, it's not, a, a recording is a beautiful thing. Their albums are masterpieces. But the, the magic of the unpredictable live experience of being in the moment, being present, and to be back and seeing live music and supporting musicians who embrace that, uh, I, I look forward to that. And I think that this time, this pause will make us appreciate how important live music and live shared experiences are to all of us. So I hope when people watch Mr. Jimmy, they kind of get a sense of that too, because it's all about the magic of being on stage and seeing someone at the top of their game play guitar so beautifully and improvise and be wild. And that's what rock and roll is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be clean and two minutes and 32 seconds every time. It's supposed to be loud, raucous rock and roll. Right. That was fantastic. I really enjoyed talking to you. And then I see that you have a lot of great passion for live music and Jimmy Sarkar's music especially. So thank you very much for joining us today. It's been an honor. I'm really appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Next, Jimmy Sarkar. But we have a little clip from Mr. Jimmy first. Please take a look. <laughs> 